I'll try it. <laughs> right, right. So how about Katfo? Katfo, oh, this was really Kitfo. good. It I was did really try good. It. Yeah, yeah. The raw kind? Uh, I feel like it was half cooked. Okay. Hmm. Yeah. You when can I first still taste the blood sometimes. Taste the blood. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you could. <laughs> it sounds like what a vampire would say. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> I know. But we have our I've own way of like uh, counting the calendar. How do you? Oh. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got yeah, like yeah. thirteen months. Uh-huh. Mascara, I'm not going to go through the whole yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, like, you'd actually remember it, but like, I mean, the first one is Mascara. The first month of the year is Mascara. And that's like spring. Right? Uh, so, currently, it's the rainy season, right? Yeah. Right after the rainy season comes spring. Oh. Uh, Mascara. So, this would be September. Yeah. So exactly. Okay. Right. Do you have any more questions? I do not think I do. Maybe she has some questions for us. That would be great. Yeah. Yeah. Ah. Uh. What do you think about the political situation? <laughs> <laughs> we are the last people you should be asking this question yeah, okay. to. Yeah. <laughs> you could tell it. Yeah. How do you feel about Ethiopian coffee? I love coffee. Oh. The Ethiopian so I love kind. The coffee. Yeah, I love right. the coffee here, yeah. yeah. We're going to make you coffee. Yeah. 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 Yes. I, like, I wish we did it with yeah. the whole like uh, ceremony, you know, like with the jabena. We don't have those. Oh, yeah, we don't have those. <laughs> I wish we did that, but I yeah. guess we like maybe some other time. Yeah. Sure. So you could try try this coffee, Buncho really coffee. coffee. Oh. That's that's the coffee we're having. Oh yeah yeah yeah. Right. <laughs> Did a lot of investing, so mostly like passive yeah. income. Right. Nice. Mm-hmm. Right. You, so I'm guessing you invested during the COVID, uh, the COVID pandemic. <laughs> Yes, I did do investing then. I've been investing like since I started working, which is probably like my advice I would give to like a lot of people who are like, you know, wanting to like save money and stuff. Like definitely don't spend beyond what you have and then like think about how to invest. Right. Um, but you also have to be careful investments too because really? you can lose. <laughs> okay, so you have to invest what you can afford to lose. Yeah. Yes, yes, okay. 100%. Don't invest what you don't have. Yeah. So how do you know... Like if you can afford to lose a certain amount of money, like it could be like if, if you're making, let's say it's someone who's making, I don't know, like a thousand dollars a month. Okay. Mm-hmm. So uh, how much would you think that like that person should spend in investments? Mm. I think it if you're making, yeah, yeah. Expenses. It depends on what your expenses yeah. are. So like what are your living expenses yeah. and mm-hmm. whatever else that is. And definitely like, um, Everybody's different and I'm not a financial advisor, so <laughs> disclaimer on that. But I really, really try to like strive for, can you save like 50% of your income? Save 50%? Can you save 50% like as a goal? And I know a lot of people like can't do this. Uh-huh. Um, but you, you do kind of realize like when you go through people's expenses, like you can cut back in a lot of things. Like let's say you um, were going to like the more expensive coffee shop and then like spending money on that coffee and you're doing that like a dollar a day. Yeah. Then that's like 30 bucks a month. And then in a year we're talking okay. like 360 bucks in the so, year. Okay. So I'm assuming you're talking to the person who's making a thousand dollars a month, right? So because um, do you really think saving a dollar a day would make a difference? It all does make a difference. It all adds up, right? Like if you don't eat out as much, you can save money there. Uh Um, And yeah, and I think those few dollars a day like adds up to a decent amount and you can put that away. And it's a really good place to just start by looking at where you're spending because this Uh is probably something most people don't do, Uh right? Um, And then you realize like where a lot of your money is going and then you can see where you can save. Okay. Um, and you can also like, I guess, like downsize on sometimes like living expenses. Like a lot of my friends, maybe if they get a raise, then they get the bigger apartment. Uh-huh. But like, do you need that bigger apartment? Mm. So it's about like prioritizing, like okay. maybe you don't like to travel. Okay. <laughs> so what's the end goal then? What's the end goal? Yeah. Like after, after, the sa- after the savings. Yeah. <laughs> if it's financial not independence uh-huh. exactly. <laughs> it's okay. amazing it's right. an amazing feeling to not okay. have to worry about you know your finances on like certainly a, a paycheck by paycheck kind right. of thing right. um and then if you can like build some cushion too then you do have the ability to like maybe not have Try. to take on a project right. <laughs> for oh. a number of months okay. Okay. and then, like go travel and try different things. Like I've always loved making videos yeah. and like yeah. doing like creative stuff and yeah. a lot of things. And so 
um, you know, working as a, a software engineer, saving, and then you now I can kind of like, I bought time to yeah, yeah. do what I was like. Was it possible like. to monetize your uh, traveling videos or anything? Y like a lot of people actually. Let's not ask further questions. Let's first introduce her. Okay. Yeah. To our audience. This is going to be our first English podcast. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, you're the first one. <laughs> I'm honored. <laughs> yeah, we're like Uncharted <laughs> territory. <laughs> yeah. We're about to test a new, yeah. new, new venture. Yeah, yeah, new venture. Yeah. So okay. we have a special guest. Uh, yeah. I'm going to butcher her your name. Uh, Lakshmi, I guess. Lakshmi, yeah. yeah. Lakshmi. Yeah. Lakshmi. Yeah, yeah. Oh, what does it mean? It's a Hindu goddess of Ooh. like prosperity and wealth and love yeah. and a lot of different things. So it's a very popular name in India. Like that, I see. <laughs> yeah. yeah. There is one video you were talking about your name. Mm. Uh, it makes you uncomfortable back in your childhood. Mm. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us more about it? About my name in my childhood? Yeah, because yeah. yeah, my parents are both Indian. Yeah. But I grew up in America and I had like the most Indian name ever. Actually, right. Lakshmi is the nickname. Okay. The whole thing is Vijaya Lakshmi. Yeah, we cannot pronounce it. Parthasarathy that. is the last <laughs> name. <laughs> So yeah. it's a tongue twister. I actually hated it growing up yeah. because it was like really different. And then uh, as a kid, yeah. you just want to fit in. True. true. Yeah. And uh, everybody had names like Bob. And yeah. Jack. Bob, <laughs> Ashley, Caitlin. Ashley, I was yeah. like, oh, mom. Did you have a nickname? <laughs> yeah. Did you come up yeah. with a new name for like to make it easier for uh, people to, t to call you? Or did you Lakshmi was this? supposed to be the easier one. And then people just made stuff up. Like they just like, you know, they got creative with it, made their own nicknames. Like I had friends who called me like... Shmi. Shmi. Oh, like some are uh, just like lock. Yeah, Shmi. L. Yeah, L. <laughs> yeah, so I just let everyone like do what they wanted with it. <laughs> right. So do people still call you Shmi? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Back yeah. in New York, my friends call me Shmi. That's where lost Shmi yeah. like came from because they'll also just put like words in front of it. Uh-huh. Like, <laughs> uh -huh. <laughs> to just like describe what I'm doing in that moment or like right. things like that. So right. lost Shmi is like my internet name. Okay. So you told us your name. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Your nickname, your mm -hmm. actual name. I, I'm, I'm not sure if I can call you your actual name. <laughs> Is that the right way to put it? Like, the actual name? <laughs> hmm? Okay, like, how do I pronounce it? I want to try it once, just once. Vijaya Lakshmi. Okay. Vijaya I'm not, I'm not, Lakshmi. I'm not going to say that. I, ca I can't say that. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's too difficult. Okay, so tell us more about yourself. Yeah, uh, I'm. so I'm Indian American. Um, I'm now a, a traveler. Yeah. I like to travel to more like adventurous kinds of destinations and like have a more of adventurous style. Um, mm. So in the past like year, I've gone from like India through Pakistan, Afghanistan, hitchhiking through Saudi, Damn. Egypt, went to Sudan and mm. then fled Sudan and came to Ethiopia. And um, yeah, so I make videos, I'm a content creator, also a software engineer. That's what yeah. I studied, I studied computer right. science. And so I do kind of like both of those things. Yeah. yeah, so you went to Harvard. I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah they let me in. <laughs> <laughs> Quite a humble way of putting it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so you went to Harvard, mm -hmm. then you got into Google. Mm -hmm. So that's like the dream for a lot of people. Yeah, mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. you got the dream mm -hmm. and you're like, no, nah, that's not for me. And then I <laughs> left the dream. Yeah, you left yeah, the dream. Yeah, I did. So um, what inspired you to do that? Yeah, you know, I had been there for like three years. Okay. And Google's a great company. I love the people that I worked with. But I was just like comfortable and I was getting a little like mm, bored with what I was doing. And I guess I could have like moved internally or something. But I really just wanted to do something completely different. Okay. Like I really did want to just like travel, explore the world. And see what more I can yeah. do, right? Because like if I just like stayed in my comfortable job in my comfortable apartment in New York City and, mm. um, but I really life. wanted to like, okay. I don't know, see what else, yeah, 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 I, but, yeah, I guess. <laughs> right. So do you think how your mom was brought up, like how she was um, directly just married to your, to your dad mm -hmm. uh, right after, like I, I'm not sure how old she was when she got married. She was like 21. Just they 21. had an arranged marriage. Yeah, yeah like completely Typical. arranged. They never met. Yeah, so exactly. I mean, that's that's actually quite common here too. In, yeah. in yeah. Ethiopia yeah. too, yeah. Yeah. But like, do you think that might have influenced your decision to just pack everything and leave your country? And just go yes, traveling? yes, definitely. I mean, you know, she never really got to like have an independent life mm -hmm. because 
she like grew up with her parents. She went to school, still living at home. And then she got married and then you live with your husband right. and then you have a family and you never really get that time to like, I guess, yeah. like be independent. So I actually became like hyper independent. Uh. <laughs> um, like when I, when I left, um, yeah, I just wanted to be like financially independent. And I really wanted to like see as many places as possible and kind right. of like, yeah, be able to like do my own thing. Um, she she appreciates it now. In the, okay. For in the beginning, I think it was like yeah. difficult. We don't see eye to eye on everything, of course. There's yeah. like, Especially when you're traveling to countries that are war torn, to be specific. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now they trust me. At least my dad really just he doesn't seem to. Seems like you get lucky. <laughs> you a lot of, I mean, the same thing with the Sudan thing. Like, yeah. Did you actually, were you there when the conflict started? I was there. I was in Khartoum oh. and we woke up to everything, just complete chaos. Wow. Yeah. So actually for the first like week and a half there, we were like the war journalists like in Khartoum <laughs> because they saw our social media and then yeah. like all of the major yeah. <laughs> news organizations were, were contacting us, which was like cool for me because like, I always wanted to be a journalist and I was like, all right, well, if I'm Ooh, here nice. for this, then I might as well, I guess, <laughs> pretend. Yeah, opportunity. Yeah. Um, I guess yeah. that's where you get the real journalists, yeah? Mm. Uh, yeah. Would you say that? Hmm? Would you say that? That that's where you get the real journalists. The real journalists. Yeah. At the, the places where it's difficult to go. Yeah. Like war zones uh, and places in Africa, you know. Yeah, yeah. There's certain places in certain Africa. Certain places in Africa. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think that's where like a lot of the I guess like hardcore journalists <laughs> yeah. go to. But also I think what was interesting about the experience was to realize that it's also really hard for journalists to get to those places, right? You don't mm -hmm. know when these like big events are going to happen. Mm -hmm. yeah. And once those things happen. Also, it's hard for a journalist to travel there yeah. because you're now a journalist and people usually block you from like getting mm. visas or right. whatever. Yeah. Um, and so you're more of a target mm. versus like the tourist. And like, I'm not a journalist, but then, yeah. <laughs> um, so I was like there at that time. And then also I can like move around the country. Okay. Um, and there's some places I've been able to travel to that a journalist like can't go to. Like I went to Syria yeah. in 2019 and there was like a, absolute hard no on journalists if they like they will like look at your background and stuff but if you're just like a normal yeah. citizen yeah. they'll just yeah. let you in <laughs> um they won't uh, yeah i mean they do investigate like i was one of five americans that got into syria that year wow. how wow. did they let you in exactly uh i mean i just like applied you have to go with okay. an agency like oh. a tour agency and you have to yeah. go on a tour okay. thing okay. um and it's just kind of like i don't know i don't know how they investigate wow. and ask them <laughs> mm. but you apply and it took six weeks Okay. I took six weeks for that one. Did you get the application granted? Um, yeah. But then six weeks later, I got an approval. Yeah. And then so they shut it down for Americans for like Ooh. a few years. Now it's yeah. opened up again. Okay. okay. So how was the whole experience in Syria like? So I was there for five days. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. it, was, it was really, a, it was a really good experience in a lot of ways. Like there's an incredible culture that they have and like the history. It's also a difficult experience, mm -hmm. of course, like, I was like in Aleppo and mm. you see all of the destruction that you kind of like you hear about on the news, but right. to see it in person yeah. mm. is, is something else. Um, mm. And there's, you know, entire cities like homes that have been What surprised destroyed. you the most hmm? when you were there? Surprised me the most? Yeah, in Syria. Because there in are Syria, a lot yeah. of misconceptions. There's so, yeah, there's so many misconceptions. Um, you know, Syria was like a very like well-to-do, like middle-class kind of country. Mm. Um, and it's much more like, I think, open-minded than a lot of people would also feel like walking around Damascus, like, you know, it's not like a headscarf is mandatory in Syria, which mm. is probably what a lot of people, like when my I friends, like back it, home would like think they're like, oh, like, right. is it... it, it is it like dangerous for you to like walk around and that's okay. and walking around Damascus like isn't dangerous. And of course Syria has like, you know, dangers and um, like at that time there was still like active war happening. Sure. But in terms of just like walking around like the streets and the dangers from Syrian people, that's not there. And that's true also of like Sudan, like while there's like the danger of political instability and instability of the country, the actual like interactions with the people were so, so, so positive. Mm -hmm. And like, they're so open to you and they treat guests like yeah. so well. Okay. <laughs> and like, I don't deserve this kind of treatment. And so, yeah. you know, there's, this is like a huge misconception. Like these countries that are dangerous, like they do have a lot of dangers from a like political government and like that kind of standpoint but like the actual people are so 
kind. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that's been like really nice to see. And it's the same thing with Ethiopia, I think. Like first time I saw mm. you, I was on TikTok. Uh, a girl who's going to hitchhike all the way from Addis Ababa. <laughs> She's to not going to survive. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no way. Wow, no way. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm from here now and I'm willing to do that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So how, how did they take it, like knowing you're from America? Because I think that would be a bit sensitive for mm. people from Syria. In Syria? Yeah. Yeah, you know, um, they actually just seemed kind of curious. Well, first they're like, you don't look American. Right. <laughs> so they're like, what are you really? And then you say Indian and they, they love... Um, They love Bollywood cultures and most like most of the mm. Arab world, they seem to love, love Bollywood. Mm. Um, but, you know, I think um, they kind of see the distinction between like the American person and what the American government okay. is doing. Okay. Oh. So they don't like blame me for what my country maybe has done, yeah. which is really, really nice, which is really, really mm -hmm. nice. And, you know, I would hope that for them, if they were to go to America, they understand that like you know, that they don't represent what the government is doing. Yeah. People are not their governments. I think like Anthony Bourdain says this. Okay. Um, and I think that's like probably like the biggest lesson from, from traveling. And so, um, yeah, America, America is like a sensitive country to say in some places, like in Afghanistan, I was not very, <laughs> I mm. was like nervous about saying that. So I would say Indian a lot, but then, you know, to the, the regular people, they don't, they don't like okay. when you say America, they're just kind of like curious. Uh -huh. Um, And, and yeah, they don't have that like associated with, the, with American people, mm -hmm. but um, definitely when I was talking to Taliban. Oh, you definitely... actually did that? You talked to the Taliban? Well, the you have the to. Taliban. You yeah. have to? Oh, yeah, they are everywhere. They won't let you in otherwise. Is There's that it? checkpoints everywhere uh -huh. in the country. Mm. So you do have to interact with, with the Taliban soldiers, wow. but generally, actually, they were also quite nice. And I, mm. So once you are identified as a tourist and you have to get a tourist permit. So you have to go to Kabul, you have to go and um, you have this like document that says that you're a tourist. You're a tourist. Right. So then their suspicion goes away. But I did have a couple of interactions where then they were like, what is she doing here? Like, is she like mm -hmm. filming? Wow. Is she like making a documentary? Or like there, yeah. there yeah. was a jump to like suspicion. Yeah. Mm. They didn't mind your drone? Oh, that's a story. Uh -huh, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, they did they did mine my drone. I okay. flew it in Bamiyan. There's a national park there that's like really beautiful and a huge lake. And then I flew it and I didn't know that these like boys behind me were actually Taliban. So they come up like behind me right after I've I've like started flying it and they're just standing there <laughs> watching. And then in, in a couple of minutes they're like, No, no. <laughs> this is not allowed. Yeah, yeah. But then um They weren't really speaking like to me directly, I think because I'm a woman. So then they were talking to the driver and I also had oh. a female guide. But then all they did was then they took the drone Okay. Okay. and then they let me go. And it? it was a... Pro it was <laughs> <laughs> they kept the drone? I got it back. I got okay. it back. It was not easy though. <laughs> yeah. How yeah. much did you pay? Um, I didn't. <laughs> I didn't pay to get it back. You know what? The, the thing about the government now with the Taliban is that they don't, they don't have corruption. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And this was something that, it, yeah, actually like there's the people there are very, uh, they want to make it clear that there is like, they don't want, they can't take money from you. So somebody who did okay. help me eventually like get access to, um, the governor of Bamiyan eventually uh -huh. met with me. Um, wow. And they're very close. No, no, no. Like, we're not coming with you to this area because we don't want it to be like we're getting anything from you. And yeah. never, no one ever, like, asked any okay. money. Um, well, so how did you actually get it back then? I actually get it back. Yeah, so we I went mean, You want to talk about it or no? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. I mean, so um, eventually, like, uh, Obeid is a really great guide in Afghanistan. Uh -huh. And he he's Pashtun, which is the... Um, the ethnicity of the, the Taliban. And so he also like had people who worked in, in Taliban. And so like he was able to arrange this meeting with the governor in Bamiyan. Uh -huh. um, like she has like this amount, this much amount of time in the country left. Uh -huh. And, you know, she was just here as a tourist. You can look at the footage or you can take the footage if you want. So they ended up giving me back the drone, but they kept the footage. They kept the oh. footage. They kept the footage. Um, there's... There's still the cached version on my phone. Okay. Like it's the, the 4K is with them. Oh. Um, but it's just, I just took a video of like the mountains. Uh-huh. Mm. So I was like, yes, you can look at all the footage on this stuff. It's just, 
in Afghanistan is literally just like mountains. Okay. Um, so in the are end... They, are they hiding any bunkers there? Hmm? Why did they took the video? I don't get it. Why did they take the footage? Yeah. Well, the reason they don't want drones... <laughs> and <laughs> the reason they would be suspicious right. of any of this kind of equipment is because of like you might be a spy right oh. what so like what did you take mm -hmm. footage mm -hmm. of that's what they're concerned about and this was like the argument like well okay you can keep all of the footage mm. just the drone okay did you end this up using the, the footage though like the cash version on your phone yeah, it's on Instagram. <laughs> it's on Instagram. <laughs> Wait, is it a private account? Or no, no, could no. Just it's, go a, and check it's a public It's a yeah, public account. Yeah, I plan on going back. Yeah. To, uh, yeah. It was actually up on my Instagram at that time. Oh. <laughs> the mountains. Yeah, quite but, risky. <laughs> hmm? Quite risky that you ended up doing that. Mm. Putting, um... You didn't Me, say. Yeah, probably. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not sure. Because also, like, I was telling them that this is the footage. And... Uh -huh. And they were like, well, we just don't know what you took footage of. And I'm like, yeah, well, right. if it's just this, though, like this is this would be fine within. Mm. I know I took footage right. of like whatever would be fine. There's no like military bases on there, or, like nothing that mm. I can use or that I'm going to use for anything other than like, hey, guys, look, <laughs> Afghanistan is beautiful. So basically the video is like, yeah, look how beautiful Afghanistan is. Yeah. Like, look at Bamiyan. So <laughs> it was like. <laughs> how dare you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so it was like promo for like Afghanistan okay. tourism. So you, like, you were mentioning uh, you were with a driver, right? Mm -hmm. So how do you navigate communication where you don't speak their local language? I had a local with me. Okay. And so she was handling that. But I also am yeah, always in situations where I have to <laughs> communicate on my own. Oh, yeah. um, I was also on my own at times in, in Afghanistan. And, you know, Google Translate and just <laughs> true, true. <laughs> or um somebody somewhere knows english so this is very okay. helpful true. uh but yeah google translate really got me did very, they have, very far did they have good internet coverage no. they had coverage but it's okay. very 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 slow mm. so How limited access to some websites like maybe facebook and instagram and other social mm. media you know what i could access those things okay. without a vpn I'm not even sure she knows what that is. I no, I know what it is. I'm a software Come on. engineer. Oh, okay. Got you, got you. Right, right. Okay, okay. Um, those sites were not blocked, as far as I know. But maybe I did have a VPN, and that's uh, why I do have a VPN on my phone. I don't always use it. Right. Okay. Um. So it's possible. Mm. Wait. Mm. So did you get a chance to talk to any local women there in Afghanistan? I did, I did. And yeah. how was the whole situation with the Taliban and mm. going to school and the whole driving thing and having the hijab on? Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, it's difficult for, for a lot of the women there. Also, it's it depends on who you talk to. Mm -hmm. to. Like, I think this is something that um, is, is not talked about as much as that. Like, I guess, like, if you talk to a woman who's, like, in an urban area who was trying to go to university, like, this is, like, really tough. Mm -hmm. um, I think there's also, like, a lot of, like, rural areas of the country where they never really got access to school, even, like, maybe when the previous government was there. Like, a lot of the country is still extremely rural, and there's a lot of development that needs to, to happen before we'll get to that point where we'll see, like universities that are even like accessible to those women and there's like a culture where like there's parts of the country that are really really conservative mm -hmm. like they're wearing the burqas and they okay. don't really leave their homes and like it's much more difficult to speak to those women yeah, yeah. and so we don't get to hear from those women as much mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um and i think like there would be mm, i think like in those parts of the country it's harder to say that, oh, like they're fighting for university rights because they're not at that point where like there's a university even near them mm -hmm. that they would be accessing. Yeah. So there's like other things that like we need to talk about in terms of development to help like women in rural areas. And then for like the women in more like urban areas, like it, I mean, it's, it's hard. <laughs> um, I think there's, there's some things that got better with the the Taliban regime coming into power in terms of security. So okay. before when the previous regime was there, 
the security situation was really, really bad. Mm. And the corruption situation was very, very bad. And so, you know, people weren't able to travel between provinces mm. or go out past like 8 p.m. And so there was like a level of security that came into the country. But then there's a lot of the rights that are being taken away and like, you know, they're being pushed back like 20 yeah. years, yeah. Um, which is like really sad. And so the, the friends that I have there, yeah. that I have there are like really struggling, you know, because they went from like going to university and uh, maybe like, like there's a friend I had who went to nursing school and she was going to be a nurse. And now that's done. Like, yeah. um, mm. baka. <laughs> and so, <laughs> and now they're just home and it's like, they're just kind of like depressed and mm. you don't, they yeah. don't know like what their future is going to be. And then the, you know, a lot, there's a lot of struggles like happening with like the economy to like, okay, even if they did go to university, the economy is like struggling really hard. So it's really hard for people to, to get jobs and stuff. But yeah, I mean, every time I open the news is like, I feel like there's another right that's been like taken away from women and that's wow. not mm. okay. right, something a lot of people So how do, how do the men feel about that? Uh, I mean, a lot of the men, like they also lived with their sisters who were going to school and they wanted to see their sisters happy. <laughs> True. You know, so I mean, I definitely met like those people who were, sad to see that when the Taliban came back into power and they did talk about how they're going to be like reformed and stuff but then slowly there was like more and more rights taken away from like the people who are their family mm -hmm. um so I think a lot of people are struggling with it I don't I can't speak for you know all of the the people in that country I can speak for the people that I met there and um I think also like the country itself is like very, very diverse. Mm. So if you talk to somebody like in the south of the country, that's going to be different than maybe like someone in the north of the country, yeah. right? Because it's very different and there's yeah. different levels of like conservatism. True, mm. true. Okay, yeah. so you were in Afghanistan after Syria? I think after Pakistan. Um, after Pakistan? Yeah, after Pakistan. Okay. So Afghanistan was recent. This was okay. just in December and then Ooh. Syria was in 2019. 2019, mm. right. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you went from Afghanistan to Sudan? Uh, well, there was a few countries like in between. Uh -huh. But um, so like I went hitchhiking from Saudi down to Sudan. Whoa. Wait, what? Not the entire, <laughs> not the entire <laughs> time. Right? Like, the Red Sea. <laughs> I know. We hitchhiked all through Saudi. This Actually, hitchhiking in Saudi was incredibly easy. Everybody okay. stopped and was like, so helpful. Wow. Okay. Even if they couldn't give us a ride, they're like, do you want water? Wow. Do you want snacks? <laughs> Wow. Um, so we hitchhiked all through Saudi and then Egypt, like okay. a big chunk of it. I ended up, actually, I got my drone taken away in Egypt. Mm -hmm. Again. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> we came by cargo ship to Egypt. I ended up having to take a cargo ship back to Saudi in order to get my drone back. Oh. Yeah. Because they don't let you enter the country with it, but they let you like mm. exit if you exit the same way. They oh, gave it back to you. Got you. So I had to go take another cargo ship yeah. to Saudi they and then I flew. Uh, hmm? You dropped your drone in Saudi and you get it back Well, after you mm. left Egypt? No, basically I took the cargo ship to Egypt and then at the port they saw my drone and then I didn't know the laws and then so they kept it at the port in mm -hmm. Egypt. So in order to leave Egypt, I had to go take another cargo ship. Yeah. Oh, I had I to leave by the port mm. to get Just it back. Just to get your item back. Yeah, I see, I see. yeah, yeah basically. Yeah. The things I did for this drone. <laughs> yeah, were they weird about it here? Here? In Ethiopia. Uh, mm, I haven't had problems. Okay. Oh, wow. So. That's wow. impressive. There was a, quite uh, impressive. There was this guy who's like driving through with a tricycle, I think. Uh, yeah. yeah. Starting from Gondor to throughout Ethiopia, and he yeah. he was having issues here, especially in a this while recording cameras in on yeah. the public. Mm. So you didn't yeah. face anything like that. I have not faced anything, but I'm also careful about where. I fly. So I'm not yeah. going to go like out into a street in Addis. Mm -hmm. Just like, you know, any <laughs> Wait, why street not? and why not? fly. Why not? Well, cities in general um, don't... Look, drones attract attention. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> even in a country where it's completely allowed to fly your drone and there's no issues, yeah. if you're going to start flying it in like um, a busy streets in cities... Like, this is going to attract attention. Mm -hmm, and um, so, you know, if you just, like, 
fly it from quieter areas and you don't like I'm not like flying it around like people's homes or like where there's law enforcement it's like mm -hmm. hanging out kind of thing uh, um, is it, is it, Right. Okay, do you have a question? No. Nah, okay, ahead. let me take you back and uh, ask you about hitchhiking because the concept is might be difficult for a lot of us. I only mm -hmm. heard about it because of you and I didn't know it existed that people do such kind of things. <laughs> and, and it was insane. So how do you build trust? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, insane. Yeah. yeah, it is yeah. insane. How do you build trust with strangers? How do mm. you say join in with strangers yeah. and go on to somewhere? How do you even get the courage? Yeah. You know, from... To just kind of like yeah, exactly. Thumb. Well, you know, I think like from traveling for so long around places, you do kind of realize that I guess like most people are kind. Like, mm -hmm. look, mm -hmm. like you do have to interact with strangers all the time, right? And you do have to put your trust trust in strangers. Mm -hmm. Like, we don't know when you take a ride mm -hmm. and you just order a ride. Like, okay. yes, like um, it's on the app and there's some level of verification, okay. but look, it's still a stranger. Right, you right. don't know who they are. Right. Uh, so we're always putting our trust in strangers every day. Mm -hmm. And definitely hitchhiking is like a level above that, mm -hmm. but it's the same concept. Yeah. But like if you're doing it maybe in you know, like very, uh, modern cities mm -hmm. or like in some European countries or cities that would make sense, but war zones, <laughs> and like third world, oh, yeah, the yeah, third yeah, world, yeah, like yeah. you know what I mean. <laughs> like I don't think anyone would actually dare to do that. Like even us, the locals, we wouldn't actually dare to do that. You know. Mm. Mm. But you actually did. That's that's. I think that's the fascinating it's thing about. Maybe it's because we see a lot of news in Ethiopia, like yeah. people getting kidnapped and well, yeah, uh, ransoms and everything. Yes. <laughs> did you read up? Do you actually read up a lot of news before you visit a country, or just? I Pop do, up. I do, but I also know that like the news is, mm, it's about the the problems, right? It's about like the incidents that happened, but True. there's still many, many people who are still alive and, you know, they're driving around and they're not kidnapping. Mm -hmm. So like the average person that you stop is like not going to kidnap at you. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. like yeah. still statistically speaking. So you're playing with the probability. Yeah, she's she's playing dice <laughs> with her life, you know? Like, I don't know. Yeah, I'm sure a lot of people listening to this will just not believe what you have to say. They'll just be stunned, you know? Because mm -hmm. considering, well, one, you're a woman, that's not easy to do, just mm -hmm. to yeah. stop someone and ask them for a ride, you know? Yeah. And without two, getting harassed? Hmm? Without getting harassed? Hmm. Yeah, I mean, like, we've... Taken mostly like trucks will stop and it'll take us like longer distances and like people have been fine. I think maybe there's like a couple of times where you feel like someone's like, um, maybe they're like hitting on you or something. Right. Uh, so like that might happen, but it also happens if you're just walking around mm -hmm. anywhere. So, yes. okay. Um, how do you brush that off then? You just don't really like engage with it. No. And then maybe you just like get out, you get out of the car and you get a new one. Like oh. no one, you know, I mean, um, I think you can, you can use your gut. Mm -hmm. Like you can tell if somebody's like, you, you don't, you feel like you don't trust them as much maybe, yeah. but I haven't had like that experience here. Maybe like, um, if, if it's like nighttime, mm. I try not to like hitchhike like much then or like. Don't accept like drinking with people mm -hmm. or stuff like that. Yeah. Um, so you just like, you know, you you could also like give them the impression that you are not going to like do anything. And yeah. people have always also been like respectful of that too. Okay. okay. So. Was there ever an incident when you stopped someone for a ride? You saw the person who's driving and you're like, no, I'm not going to do this. Um, I think there was one time we stopped a car and it just seemed like there was a lot of people in the car and it seemed like maybe they had been drinking or something. Right. And so we were like, no. Right, right. Mm. Do you carry a weapon? Like a taser or something? I don't. I used to have pepper spray, but I think I uh -huh. lost it somewhere. Oh, <laughs> oh man. <laughs> you want to yeah. try it? How, how does no, someone I do not. <laughs> no, I do not. <laughs> the same language. Hmm? How does someone hit on you? On, within a without, different language? Yeah, without having speaking the same language as you. I think a lot of people, at least they know of uh, a yeah. few English words, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's the one thing colonialism you know, has taught us. A good yeah. thing. Everybody speaks English to some extent. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. 
<laughs> that's true. I am spoiled with English. So that's been very helpful in my travels. True. And then, yeah, if someone's like hitting on you, it's like one, like the way that they're like looking at you and then, yeah, they're like few English words or whatever. Mm. And they keep like repeating them too much. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, okay. <laughs> All right. So how did you make your way from Sudan to Ethiopia? I think you landed in Somalia before that. Yeah. I took a, yeah. I went to Somalia after I'd already gotten to Ethiopia. Okay. Escaping Sudan, that was, that was by hitchhiking. So actually having hitchhiked before was really helpful in getting out of Khartoum because that was the only way that we really could get out. Mm. Because, um, you know, at that point, like there's the banking system was completely down. Mm. So there wasn't like any way to get money. Right. And, we lost power. We lost water. Internet. Um, the internet was like going in and out. Thankfully, they never like did like a blackout in the country. But yeah, the infrastructure was like all going down. So the internet wasn't like really reliable. Mm. And so the, the like way out for us was hitchhiking. Yeah. So we hitchhiked out of Khartoum. Okay. Um, probably like just in time too. I mean, the embassies were still saying... Like my American embassy. Yeah. Like, oh, shelter in place. Mm. No. Nah. Uh, did you have to no. walk a lot? <laughs> hmm? Did you have to walk a lot of distance or like did you find cars that would take you somewhere? We didn't have to walk that far. Oh. Um, there are times we we wouldn't walk that much. Like we would just like wait longer mm. for a ride to stop. Um so we it took us like a few cars to get out of Khartoum. Mm -hmm. And then once we were on like the edge of the city, they have we found these trucks like this is actually, I guess, like local transport, I think, like all the time mm -hmm. where um, the buses are actually like pricier. And so a lot of the trucks transport people through, too. Oh. So they just like stuff as many people as they can on it. And so, yeah, a truck stopped. And at that time, they were helping people flee from war. So they were going through like the villages and picking up people and they mm -hmm. took like the side roads and stuff. And then they had this like network of like little it was like refugee camps of sorts. So they would, they dropped us off like at night. Uh, I didn't know where we were. I was like, I thought we were gonna have to like camp or something. And then these, these boys come out and then they like take us into this like shelter area where they're helping people stay if their like homes were destroyed and stuff. So we spent mm -hmm. a night there and then we made it to Madani where a friend of ours hosted us for. Where, where is that? Madani, it's a city about like five hours out south of Khartoum. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. So on the border of Sudan? Um, it's it's farther to the border because okay. then we had to get down to Matema oh, where right. the border was. Right. We stayed in Sudan for a little bit longer, like away from the the fighting area. We went uh -huh. down to Kordofan. Okay. Actually, like a lot of my stuff was in Khartoum still, like mm. my computer mm. and a bunch of my things. I had left them at a, a friend's place. He lived near the airport. I left them there okay. for like safekeeping when we went mm, traveling yeah. around Sudan. And then when we got to Khartoum, I was like, oh, I'll get it the next day. Right. And then there was cool. no way to get it. Mm. So we ended up staying there longer in Sudan. I don't know. It's like waiting to see mm. what happens a bit. Mm. Um, and then when it was clear that things weren't getting better. Right. And, and at that point there was just like the internet was completely going out all the time and yeah. there was, the infrastructure was going. And so then we got out and we went to Matema mm -hmm. where there's a chaotic border. <laughs> was that always the plan to make it from Sudan to mm. Ethiopia? Yeah. I wanted to come to Ethiopia. Okay. We wanted to, Khadija as well, who I met in Sudan mm. and we both then fled together out and we've both been to Ethiopia independently before oh, you've been here before i've been here before like oh. a while ago okay like many years ago but i was only here for like a week oh so you i came for work uh no no no. i came just for right. just for visiting traveling. okay when and, did you but I, traveling? I started traveling when i was 17 that was my okay. my first time wow. out of the country i Whoa. went to ghana ghana in africa it was my wow. first time on a plane yeah. so then i fell in love with kind of like more adventurous travel and then i also realized that, okay so like my image, my impression of what I think places are like is uh -huh. generally wrong. Ooh. And so like the way I like look at maps <laughs> now is like, what's there? Right. I don't know. I want to go. Yeah. And when I came to Ethiopia, like at the time, I didn't know anything about it. I had enough time to go to a few places and find out that there's so much in okay. the country. Yeah. And so I always wanted to come back. Oh, so what were you expecting to, to see when you came here? And what did you actually find? Yeah, when I first came, honestly, all I knew about it was famine. 
That's like, just like honestly, like literally. Well, yeah. I mean, <laughs> that was like probably the last thing I remembered hearing about <laughs> no. it. Um, I did know that you know Ethiopia hadn't been colonized, and like it has some good food. There's like this Ethiopian restaurant that I remember <laughs> yeah. going to once, um, and it tasted a bit like Indian food. <laughs> oh, it's spicy. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was like spicy, right. and so yeah, these were like the only things I really knew okay. about Ethiopia. And then when I came, I was like, wow, this country is so beautiful. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, like incredibly uh. <laughs> beautiful. I remember like I went up to. Uh, cause I went to Lalibela okay. mm. and I went to Bahirdar. So mm. I actually have been to these things like years ago to these two places. And I don't really remember that much about it, but I remember like the landscape is so beautiful. Yeah. And then like, there's, it has like a really interesting culture. Like it is really unique maybe True. because it hasn't been colonized too. Like it, maybe. it's retained like uh. a lot of it, but, um, yeah, I just like, I loved it a lot. I was yeah. like, wow, there's so much history here. I didn't right. know anything. <laughs> so you came yeah. here how many years ago? Like the first time you came here? This was in 2012. <laughs> wow. And you so came back in like, ago. yeah, 10, 11 years yeah. later, yeah. you came back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Have so, you noticed any changes around those areas, the ones you went before? Like Changes. Uh, you know, Addis has changed. I remember going to Intoto before and there was mm. nothing there. And now right. there's like the so much. Part, yeah. 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 Mm. Um, I don't remember Bahadar. I remember the lake. The lake is still there. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, so I it, definitely things look more. Some things like look more developed generally. Mm. Okay. Um, but then also I think some things, I guess, regressed in some ways because wow. because before there wasn't this conflict happening. Right. As far as I remember. Right. Like Ethiopia was like a sa one of the safer was. Was places, places to go, right? And mm -hmm. so, and I don't remember there being these kinds of like ethnic tensions that was, you know, definitely not like in the news or like regions being shut down that I couldn't go to and stuff like that. Right. Um, so that's kind of sad. Um, yeah. But other things have like developed. Mm. Right. So apart from yeah. the infrastructure and the lakes, mm. Lalibala and whatever, like... Uh, how do you see the, the the Ethiopian people? The people? Yeah. Oh, I mean, we've had like great experiences. I think that's why. Like, I, yeah. I the first time I came, I had great experiences with the people that I met. Like, so I and then now we've met incredible people. Even like you know we've been hitchhiking and but the people that we've hitchhiked with have been so helpful actually our very first hitchhike i always tell this story because he, we like just put our thumbs up in addis and then someone stops in two minutes he still checks on us oh yeah so like while we're like while we were hitchhiking like up to bahadar i was like checking yeah. and then when we needed like translation help actually like, just call <laughs> we him up call him. yeah, yeah. His, his english is like better than mine and <laughs> <laughs> um yeah so i mean we've we've met like really good people is he the same person who drops you off here no 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 okay this is this is someone else um, we've like, we made friends also in like Matimma. Uh -huh. Um, mm. wow. How yeah, do you we just go about yeah, making yeah. friends? You know? Exactly. Like, I'm actually like, curious. Um, I think on one of your episodes, your TikTok videos, you were trying to camp, uh, outside oh, yeah, of the yeah, church yeah. and. Inside the church. Chancho. Uh, <laughs> Chancho. <laughs> Chancho, yeah. I mean, <laughs> this like <laughs> random town <laughs> on the way hitchhiking, then we got like stuck there and then we, uh, there was this church that we found and we walked up the hill and it had this like really green area in the back. Oh. So we were like, maybe we, we can camp, camp there. <laughs> wow. Oh, wow. It's so beautiful. Let's I camp know. here. I know. <laughs> Not something we would say. Yeah. yeah. No. And then there was a man that came at some point. And at this point it was like 9 p.m. So it's like dark. Oh, and then yeah. he came and he was speaking in Amharic. <laughs> and like only I'm hard. He knew zero English words. Yeah. And but he was definitely saying like, you know, like no. we can't be here. <laughs> right. Yeah. Something like this. And we're like, oh, do we have to like leave? He's like kicking us out. You want money? Didn't you ask him like, you want money? Money? I have money. Because, oh. you know, corruption here is not like <laughs> Afghanistan. This is not like actually corruption, is it? Like, I don't know. You didn't, you didn't ask that? Sure. In no, no, church. because we just didn't. <laughs> we we thought maybe he was just telling us like we can't camp here. Okay. And yeah. we were like, I mean, instead of giving him money, we can just go get a hotel. Like it's right. not it's not like it was expensive right. there. We right. just wanted to camp yeah, for whatever just, exactly. reason. Exactly, wanted the adventure of camping out. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I don't know. I think, but also I, I was just like, I don't know what to say. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I don't know what happened. Park. Then? Hmm? What happened then? Um. So then, he brought like more people. More people came. 
like as we were like packing up our stuff mm. and then we were like, Oh, I think maybe like, okay, they're trying to say something to us. We ended up calling Baki. This is our first hitchhike <laughs> because we tried to then like use Google translate, right. but they don't read. Oof. Right. And there isn't like audio. <laughs> and then I was like, Oh no, I actually, I don't know what to do because right. if Google translate fails, right. it's so, like, okay, we'll call people. Yeah. <laughs> So then, oh, actually, Bucky called at that time. Ooh. He called. He was checking up on us. Wow. <laughs> and then we were like, oh, yes, you can help us. Yeah. So then um, he's on the phone with them and they're all like talking, talking. And then um, he's like, OK, yeah, just go with them. We're right. Like, OK. <laughs> so okay. we go with them. They wow. take us to this room because they just have space there where guests yeah. actually wow. stay at the church. OK. Mm. So then they and they seemed really excited to actually like have us. Then they yeah. were they brought in Jara uh -huh. <laughs> and then they like gave us. They like he was Gersha. Okay, <laughs> like, Gersha. Yeah, the nun and the woman there. All right. <laughs> and they were taking pictures yeah. <laughs> with our phones and everything. And so they actually just hosted us for the night. All we right. thought we were being kicked out and mm. they were just trying to like help us and yeah. wow. see where we wanted to go. Okay. Um I definitely think being, I guess, like two girls who mm. look pretty harmless. Mm -hmm. Um people, <laughs> people sometimes just come yeah. to help. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> yeah. So you you made your way from Metama to Magali. Gondor, probably. Yeah, there was like a long right. journey. Because we went to, actually went to Afar. We went to Danikil Depression. Wow. I didn't start posting on TikTok until like a few weeks ago. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Previously, I was like on Instagram. Uh -huh. And I just started posting on TikTok once me and Khadija started this hitchhiking uh -huh. journey up to Bahadar. Yeah. Mm. Then I started posting about like this hitchhiking on TikTok. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, so like from Matema, it was like a long journey. Then we went to Addis and I was there for a little bit. I went to Afar. Uh -huh. Um, we went wow. to Harar. Ooh. We had tried to Harar damn, too. You're so lucky. Like we live here, we've, we've lived here all our lives, but like mm -hmm. there's so many of us who haven't visited those parts of the country yet. Yeah. You know yeah. I, mean? I don't visit the United States. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, That's the thing about <laughs> tourists. Though, right? yeah, yeah. Yeah. Cause you just feel like, Oh, it's always going to be there. Like I right. live here. Right. But when you're a tourist in a place, then you're just there for like a couple months or a few weeks or whatever. And so you're like, I want to go everywhere. True. And you see it in this like whole new perspective. So like mm -hmm. I see people visiting like places in America sometimes I'm like, Oh, why don't I like well, go around I <laughs> there? Um, and yeah, so actually I get these comments uh, when I post things like in like Ethiopia, people are like, I, this, you make me, you inspire me to travel my own country mm. or like to look at my own country as yeah. beautiful. And that's like really, really nice. That's beautiful. Sure. <laughs> yeah. yeah. One yeah. thing oh. that surprised me was the uh, toll fee that you give the guy water just to pass through the road. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that was surprising to me too. Like, I was like, what? Do people do this? In Afar? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, only in Afar. This is when you know water is scarce in a region. <laughs> right. Water and chat and okay. cigarettes. Ooh. Ooh. Did, you, did you get a chance to try a chat? I did. Okay. In Harar. Okay. <laughs> Which it's I part guess of is the, the appropriate yeah, yeah, yeah. place yeah, to, yeah, yeah. to try it. Actually, I wanted to make a video about chat. I think it's so interesting. Okay. Yeah, because it's not something I had ever heard of in America. No. And it's illegal there. It is. Um, so obviously, like if you think it's just all oh, this is an illegal drug, and then you mm. go and like try it, but it's also like uh, I don't know, I don't, just having like some of it felt like okay, I had like an espresso, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. And I was like, okay, maybe if I have like four times more of this, mm. then <laughs> you'd be super hyper. It'll yeah, yeah, yeah it'll yeah. it'll kick in. Yeah, we had I had it um when I was taking. I had more of it when I took a minibus uh -huh. at some point in Harar. So she just offered you the chat and you just took yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, So actually when we were, the minibus was like stopping in places and I was like, I wanted like snacks, but no one was selling <laughs> snacks. It was always chat. <laughs> and they, they probably have peanuts. Bus, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you could not find snacks or yeah. like anything. So, um, and then everybody on the bus was getting chat and then they obviously knew we were foreign. Right. And so they were like, yeah, have you tried chat? <laughs> <laughs> Is that? <laughs> and I was like, awesome. Okay. <laughs> so then they were like showing me how to how to eat it and right. like picking leaves and they're giving it to me. And then it was like a really long uh -huh. bus ride. And so then I chewed a, a lot of it and then uh -huh. I was just talking to everybody. Right. I was like, right. <laughs> they say I was it's really the drug of love. <laughs> huh? yeah. They say it's a drug of love. Drug of love. Yeah. yeah. It's just then like really social. <laughs> right. Right. I can be really introverted at times when I was like, mm. chat. Frills? <laughs> you, you, you'd say you're introverted. 
Um, I'm introvert, extrovert. Like okay. I love talking to people, meeting people, but I also need my mm. like time yeah. by myself. Also, okay. like this, I think this is why I love things like video editing and software engineering right. and right. things yeah. like I can spend lots of time, like just myself, like thinking. Okay. Mm. And, uh, yeah, so, but there's a part of me that's extroverted. Like, I can sit here for hours and talk. Yeah, <laughs> we travel a lot, probably. Like, you have, you have crossed a lot of uh, diets. Mm -hmm. And how do you entertain those? Like, do you find some foods that you can't eat or that mm. you don't like? And, you know, what there happens then? some foods I don't like. I generally am open to trying things. Mm. I'm not a big foodie, though. Okay. So, I don't, like... I can go without having, I don't know, maybe like an amazing meal that I personally like love or something. So I can like adjust. Mm. Um, but yeah, there's like some foods that I just like don't like much. There's like anything with a slimy texture. Mm. So it's really popular in Egypt. I also encountered it in Sudan. Molochia. Okay. I'm saying it wrong because they have... <laughs> yeah, we don't know what that is. So <laughs> there's like <laughs> this kind of food that I just can't do that much. I don't eat much, that much meat. So, but I will try stuff. Like I tried the raw meat mm -hmm. here, but I don't eat Ooh, red meat that much. You did. I did. How, how was that experience? It's like, like beef sushi beef is sushi. what I would call oh, it. Oh, wow. yeah. That's actually a good way to put it. Yeah. 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 It has the same texture, but it has a like beef flavor. Uh -huh. Is it the one? The food? Yeah. 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 That, that, that. Oh. Mm -hmm. I think so. It's like the green. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. I'm not a big fan. It looks like a yeah. data. I don't, I, it's not that. Is it I, spicy? It, no, it's not spicy. I just... The look yeah, of it. The, just the look of it. <laughs> yeah. Mm. yeah. I don't think most Ethiopians would like that either. Yeah, it also have rice with it. What I didn't love, oh, I don't love, uh, I think it's called Ginfo. Ginfo. It's just not like Ginfo. Oh, oh yeah, man. Slimy, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, true. It could be slimy something. How about Bula? Same Bula? thing. You've never had Bula. Uh, Bula. Bula. No, no. Ooh. I haven't heard of it. Oh, I think if, if she does not like Ginfo, she definitely would not like Bula. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's it's even like, slimy. What is it called? Yeah, uh, it's uh, slimy. Uh, Jelly thing, porridge. No, no, no. Uh, jam. Yeah, yeah. Jam, jam. something like that. Yeah, it's yeah. no. I, it's not I, like jam. It's like not it's sweet. It does not taste sweet. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I think someone <laughs> we should we should just take her to a place with really good uh, bulla. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So we can have I'll, some. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'll try it. <laughs> right, right. So how about kitfo? Kitfo. Oh, this was really kitfo. good. It was I did really try good. It. Yeah, yeah. The raw kind. Uh, I feel like it was half cooked. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, you when can I first still taste the blood sometimes. Taste the blood. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you could. <laughs> it sounds like what a vampire would. Say. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> I know. Um, the first the the kitfo that I had, I think, was half cooked, mm, and uh -huh. yeah, I just tasted all the spices. <laughs> yeah, that's what good. makes the kitfo really good. Just mm, the spices. Mm -hmm. yeah, 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 and the butter too. Like I think Ethiopian butter is different oh. from the type you're used to. Okay. We call it kabi. Kabe? Kabe, yeah. Kabe. It even has like a distinct smell to it. Oh. Yeah. There's so many different kinds of foods here. Yeah. I right. just had like um, the, you know, when there's lots of little dishes. Uh huh. Bayana. Right, that's a vegan that, dish. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then there's like all these different kinds of like um, different dishes on it. And uh -huh. I don't know. I, so they would tell me the names of everyone. I can't remember. Like there's like <laughs> the mister and the cook and the tikal goman and the shuro. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> right, you, you definitely... yeah, there's a shuro in the middle. Yeah, I think you know it knows shuro. Everybody knows shuro. It's like Indian food also has like so many different kinds. Right, and then yeah. when you go to a different region, then they do something different with it they and they call it something yeah. different. Yeah. And yeah, I feel like there's like that kind of thing okay. happening here too. Uh huh. So how was it like growing up as an Indian uh, in, in the America. US? Uh, you know, in my neighborhood where I grew up, like my school, there were no Indians. <laughs> right. There's okay. 1.4 billion in the world, but I didn't know any of them wow. until I went to college. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah. So it's, um, I think now there's like more of like an awareness about Indian culture. Like you see more like brown mm. people in the media and mm -hmm. i remember when like slumdog millionaire came out right. and then that was probably like the first time where there was like a pop culture reference to indian culture that was like mm -hmm. really positive mm -hmm. like no one has like any like negative feelings i feel like towards indian people but it's not like something that's um, looked at as like cool mm -hmm. <laughs> so uh you know i mean it, i think it can be difficult in mm. To be in a community where there's like no one who's like like you, so you know, like I hated yeah. my name and yeah. and um, 
I think people think that something's Indian culture like weird. Mm, yeah. So I think I like separated like my culture at home mm. and then school. Uh, but now I don't. And like, right. it, like being Indian in the U.S. like definitely like, okay, in New York, like mm. there's so many people from like everywhere and it's like so diverse. Mm -hmm. um, and so like in that uh, now with like the community that I have, like it's really great. Like, it, uh -huh. yeah. yeah. How often so, do you go back into the States? I mean, after you started traveling. After I started to travel, once a year. So I left when the pandemic hit. And then I became like a permanent nomad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you just go back then. to renew your passport? I go. I haven't had to renew my passport in a while. We have 10 years on it. So oh, I'll wow. Have, I have like three years left on mine. 10 years. <laughs> yeah, wow. yeah. So this we is We have nice. five. Five? Yeah. Oh, okay. Then, All yeah. Right. You have to like... It's not like it has any value either. So. Yeah. Like anywhere you want to go, you have to go through the embassy, get yeah, a visa yeah. and all that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I saw that show Never Have I Ever. Ah, uh, yeah. I haven't seen it, but you have it. <laughs> I have it. Everyone thought, tells me. Yeah, I, I have to see it. I, I felt like you'd relate to the main character. Everyone tells me that. Mm. I think she's also Tamil American. Uh -huh. So like my family's from South India, okay. Tamil Nadu. And I think that show is also a Tamil girl. Yeah, what are the odds? <laughs> what are the odds what are the odds i know yeah. so i noticed on your on one of your youtube videos that mm -hmm. you've been to the amazon yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i've been mm. to the amazon and i like jungles uh -huh. so i've been to the amazon i've also been to the congo jungle yeah. and then in borneo okay i spent a week in the jungle with wow. the panan tribe right so how do how does like how does a tribe operate like how do you think you know, mm. like hardly different from everybody else, basically. Yeah. Every tribe is different. Uh -huh. And I think, you know, most of them also have like some level of like either like modernization or interaction with the society next to them. And that shapes how they think. Um, but there are like elements of how they live that are completely separate from like modern society and so um you know when i was in aturi in congo like they still hunted with nets and mm. spears wow. and they do it like really effectively too yeah. like they're really good at it yeah they have been do um, doing it so long hmm? yeah they must have done some modification to their method because they have doing it for so long mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah 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 um like actually what they would do is the women would go and they would make these like loud whooping sounds and then mm. this would scare the animal to run in the opposite direction, right. away from them. And then what the men would be waiting wow. with the nets. What kind of sound? Hmm? What kind of sound? Be like, woo, woo, woo. <laughs> it's like that. <laughs> yeah. They've gotten creative with that. Right. How, come the, at the end. Right. Like, how come the animals didn't like, catch up to their tricks? <laughs> Come on, they're not that smart. They're not. <laughs> <laughs> they're not. The instinct is to like run in a direction. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. So they run in the opposite direction. Uh, yeah, exactly. I got yeah. that. Yeah. But they didn't catch on to that trick. I mean, that's what makes us different from the rest, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, I guess. Yeah, right. Um, well, I think like they also because they have these long nets, like mm -hmm. it's not like they have to run in the exact straight line, wrong uh. direction. Like if they're going even at an angle. Mm. then they can still catch yeah and then the women have spears too so mm -hmm. like if they run at the women it's not like they're safe yeah no. so they tend to just like run somewhere away and there's generally like someone with a net so they're very good at this mm -hmm. um but you know they tend to like they have a life that's much more closer to nature mm -hmm. and i think that aspect of it is something you know that like appeals to me as someone who lived in a, a city right, mm. right. and who has like very city like problems and mm -hmm. city like stresses and stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, and to I guess, spend any amount of time in a place where you're not, you don't have all those like modern comforts, but you don't also, you don't need them. Right. And so the idea of being comfortable with less and mm -hmm. not like worrying about all of the, the things that we tend to worry about right. in, city life mm -hmm. that aren't actually things we need to worry about yeah i mean I, um, I feel like they have a lot of leisure time um i mean what do they do all day <laughs> i wonder yeah. if they hunt and they get food I mean, what else is there to do sometimes I um wonder. yeah but you know they're the the hunter gatherers mm. like 
they also are just like move around constantly too, mm. right? So like the whole, the process of getting food isn't just like, you know, walking to the store and then having, or calling up an Uber <laughs> to bring you food. Um, so they spend a lot more time like on those kinds of things. And so um, if they're in the jungle hunting for animals and stuff, like maybe they'll stay for like a month in one place, but then they move and then they reset up camp. So they're setting up their shelters and everything again. Um, and yeah, I mean, they're not like busy in the city kind of way, which mm -hmm. is nice, but they also like they have a lot to do because things also take longer if you don't have modern technology. <laughs> right, right. So like, which takes me to my question. Um, can you see yourself living with that tribe for like two, three years? Mm. Two, three years? Yeah. Oh, this is a good question because right. I thought about this a lot. Uh -huh. um, you know, I, I think I think a year. A year. I think if you put me beyond a year. <laughs> uh -huh. I would have to like reevaluate this, <laughs> but it's so like fascinating yeah. and I'm obviously not that great in the jungle. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> but. I'd have to work on that. So um, it would be like really interesting to be able to, you know, I'm so, our ancestors and these people, like they can just survive in the jungle and mm. we are useless. True. Yeah. Um, so it'd be cool to like learn these skills and stuff and then actually spend more time to see how they live. There's also, their societies are like set up differently. There's certain tribes, like the ones that I visited where they're like much more egalitarian the way like mm -hmm. men and women are. Right. Um, and so like, this is really interesting. So from like an anthropology perspective, it'd be great to like live longer. I don't know if I would have, I would probably struggle in some ways, like without mm -hmm. Wi-Fi. <laughs> <Right. laughs> I think this would, this would be You'll the thing. Get that would, hmm? You'll get used to it. Yeah. Yeah. I get used to it. Yeah. I'll figure it out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How about them? Like, do you think they would want to like have your life, the city life? Mm. Yeah. You know, um, this is a question that a lot of them think about too, mm. because like, as they kind of like live on like the edge of society, mm. like, so the younger people I think are more attracted to trying to mm. like move to the city and mm. attracted by technology mm. Um, and if you talk to a lot of the older people, the older generation, they most mostly like they spend time in the city and they don't want that. Mm. Um, and you know, so there's like advantages and disadvantages to both, yeah. but they see like the negative effects of living right. in modern society. Right. Um, and they like the, the like peaceful side of like living in nature. Mm hmm. Yeah. I mean, have you visited all continents? I mean, except Antarctica. Antarctica. <laughs> Maybe Europe. We've mentioned Asia, Africa, mm -hmm. South America, and of course North America. But how many countries? Europe have you and Australia. Yeah, I've visited sixty-five countries. How many of those are you actually proud of? Wait, but before actually answering <laughs> that one, uh, answer his question. I want to know. Like, mm, if there's I, any continent you've never been? Yeah, I haven't been to Antarctica. Right. <laughs> Australia <laughs> and Europe. I mean, that's basically what the question yeah, is. Have you been yeah. to Australia or Europe? Um, and again, I haven't been to Australia. Mm. Um, but I've been to, I've been to the rest. Yeah. But I haven't like covered, uh -huh. you mm. know, the entire continent. Like, okay, I've been to like India and Thailand and a couple others in Asia, but there's a lot. Really? Not, not China? Countries is I haven't been to China. China. Wow. How come? Wow. China is a big country. I would, I mean, I would love to go. Uh -huh. Now they're open again, actually. Yeah. Mm. So it's, it's all about, I have to make choices. <laughs> True. True. <laughs> because now if you say that, I'm like, oh yeah, China. Uh -huh. like, no, <laughs> someday, someday. <laughs> right. So how many countries from Africa have you visited? I've been to 16. From Africa? From Africa. Wow. Yeah. I've done like, I think probably most of my travels have mm. been in, in Africa. Damn. How do you pick your destinations? Mm. They pick me. They, ooh, ah, it's I like a calling. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, when I first came, actually, I don't know how Ghana, my friend and I still can't figure out how we chose Ghana. Mm -hmm. um, but I know when I went to, uh, I, when I went to Egypt and then I ended up in Ethiopia the first time I did this like long trip, I uh -huh. ended up there because there were really cheap flights. <laughs> uh -huh. It was okay. 2012. So Egypt was just post-revolution. Uh -huh. So yeah. there was a really cheap flight. Right. They wanted people to visit. I don't know if they wanted people to visit, <laughs> but it was really cheap okay. to visit. Right. <laughs> so. I just couldn't come up with a reason why it would be cheap to 
like uh, to get a flight to Egypt. Post revolution, not yeah. many. Exactly. <laughs> right, right. Not many people going. Yeah, in. and like they don't yeah. have that many tourists coming in. Yeah. So you know, yeah, well. yeah, yeah. Might as well. <laughs> so sometimes it's cheap flights, but you know, generally, like I just either I see something on the internet, someone tells me about something, and mm. then it like piques my curiosity. And then I start like looking into stuff and then I get it in my head that I want to go. Mm. And then I somehow end up there. Or sometimes it's just spontaneous too. If I'm just in a place and then somebody else is like, want to come here? Right. Mm. <laughs> and I'm like, okay. okay. <laughs> I couldn't decide where to go. I'm thinking about China now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we just planted that idea in your head. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So would you say it's like your purpose to just travel the whole world? I mean, that's a very deep way of asking the question, I know, but you know. Yeah. Um, I hope so. Wow. I don't know. It's kind of cool. Okay. <laughs> like, right. I don't know. I mean, there may come a point where, um, I actually thought this point would have already come where I would have been uh, tired of traveling. Huh. There, there are definitely moments where I feel like I want to rest and not move around so much, but I still feel this desire to see more mm -hmm. and explore more places. And I think definitely being able to share it mm. helps too. Like, um, so yeah, we'll see how long. Wow. I keep wanting to travel right. and see things. I feel like you at least keep traveling for another 10, 20 years. Maybe. 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 By yeah. that time, you should yeah. be able to cover the entire continent. <laughs> <All seven. laughs> the whole seven. Yeah. <laughs> do you intend to go to Antarctica? Like, are you curious about what's going on in Antarctica? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I definitely do want to go there. Like, you can get, I know you can get the cruise ships down. Uh -huh. And uh, if you go down to Patagonia and Argentina. Mm. And if you show up, just... Without booking it, also you can get cheaper cruise ships that go there. <laughs> right. What do you, what do you expect to see when you get there? Ice. Love it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. Because like you hear a lot of conspiracy theories about mm. like what could be going on in Antarctica. <laughs> conspiracy theory. Yeah. Oh, okay. No, I haven't heard these. Oh, really? Okay. <laughs> no. Then, let's not get into it then. Okay. I'll after this, I'll go. <laughs> right. On okay. that corner of the internet. For real, like you've never like. Uh, done any research on like what goes on in Antarctica and whatever like the research in Antarctica uh huh what do they do there like have you ever been curious about it and now I am now you are okay. <laughs> now right. I'm really that's curious. going to take you on a whole nother rabbit hole I'm not sure if you're ready for that but uh -huh. might be interesting yeah. might be interesting uh -huh. I mean like just to kill some time <laughs> right <laughs> sure right. Okay. take me down the rabbit hole <laughs> I mean, so you're an Indian so how was it uh, to go back to India. I mean, when was the first time you went back to India? I was 19, 20. Okay. Yeah, when I first went to India. Mm. And my whole extended family lives in India still. So my grandmother mm. is there too. So I met my grandmother for the first time. Wow. Um, I met my like aunts, uncles, cousins. And there was this feeling of like uh, going home in a sense because I grew up in an Indian household. So there's all these things that I didn't really get and I guess like behaviors that my like mm. mom and dad have that once I went to India mm. I was like oh I get it sense. I get it now yeah. yeah and then it was like nice to be in an environment where um like everybody is like wearing these things <laughs> and everybody is eating this kind of food and it's right. not weird <laughs> yeah. so right. that was really cool yeah so what why did it take you so long to visit India? Mm. yeah I mean so I was my parents came right before I was born mm -hmm. and it just came down to like difficulty with visa issues and like mm. all this stuff and then affordability of traveling. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't until I was almost 20 that I got the opportunity to go. Yeah. So you went to Ghana first? Like that's the first country you visited outside the US? Yep. <laughs> wow. So it was Ghana, then came India? Uh, kind of. For Then I went actually, I went to a little Euro trip. After oh. Ghana, we went on a Euro trip. Right. And then that's when we decided we actually liked Ghana way better. Uh -huh. <laughs> we went to Paris right after and we were like, this is boring. Right. <laughs> um, so that was like my summer break in college. I went to right. Ghana, Euro trip. And then the next summer I went to India. Uh -huh. yeah. So what did you like most about Ghana? What I like most about it? Yeah. Everything was so different. <laughs> uh -huh. It has such a like colorful culture, which I guess I can also say that about India as well. Right. Um, but yeah, for, for Ghana, you know, it, it was like my first like experience mm. of like just, 
you know, I mean, in a developing country, like a lot of things like don't work as well. There's like chaos in the streets and there's mm. a lot of, th- and I liked the chaos. <laughs> you, you <laughs> to like be honest. The chaos, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Um, I mean, sometimes I do miss like, you know, being in a more like organized uh-huh. state of things. Um, and when things like work better. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I really, I really liked, I really liked the adventure of it. Mm. And then, and I liked that I didn't know anything about the place. Like I, so I felt like I was kind of discovering something new for myself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and then people also were interested in me because they don't get as many foreigners who were up like in the middle of nowhere in (laughs) Northern Ghana. Mm -hmm. And so people were like, Oh, like they were also, they, they were like learning about, yeah, they get excited. Were, yeah, they get willing to interact with you yeah. much better than. Whereas, your like, world. Paris is not like that. Uh, another one, <laughs> just another person. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, and I live in New York City. Like, when we see a tourist, we're not like, "Oh my God, yeah. where are you from?" <laughs> right, right. We're like, "I have places to go. Can you go <laughs> <on the> sidewalk?" <laughs> right. Yeah. Um. So yeah, there's just like, it's much more exciting mm-hmm. to go to some of these, I guess, like less discovered places. Right. <laughs> so how do you see like? the whole uh, Ethiopian situation mm, in, which in terms of the politics. In terms of the politics? Yeah, right. Mm. Uh, I mean, I'm not <laughs> the person to be speaking on Ethiopian mm-hmm. politics. Right. <laughs> um, in spite of that. Uh, in spite of that. Like, tell us how you feel about the whole Ethiopian politics in spite of you not being the right person to mm. address the situation. Um, yeah, I mean... I guess, some, you know, I did say like before when I previously traveled here, there weren't any issues right. in the region. And so now there are, I guess, like more of a divide among people. I think it would be what I liked about Ethiopia and what was interesting reading about how like the country has never been colonized before. Right. Like, it was, and it was largely because like the country really came together. Yeah. And so in terms of the political situation now, which obviously is like, you know, it's been in stabler times. Mm-hmm. It would, I would love to see it like return to people mm-hmm. coming together, like not looking at each other within mm-hmm. the country as like any possible enemy or whatever. Um, yeah. I don't know what specifically on Ethiopian politics to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> I really don't. <laughs> no, no, I just wanted you to just, you know, like, as a foreigner, I feel yeah. like, and mm-hmm. someone who's been to different parts of the country at different yeah. times yeah. yeah i felt like you'd be the right person to say something especially when it comes to interacting with the actual people and you know yeah. on the ground you know like how most people are nice they're willing to invite you to their house yeah. drive you around and take you places yeah. i mean considering all that it's sometimes yeah, you know. i feel like there's also a misconception like w- even within the country itself like the i think people have a skewed perception about how people would like uh, receive you when you go to their part of the country, you know? Yeah, yeah. So like you being a foreigner and still getting the reception you got, I feel like that's a very powerful message to a lot of Ethiopians listening to this podcast. So that's why I asked you to say something about the whole political climate. Yeah, Yeah, no, it's true. I mean, we've now traveled to like many different regions within Mm. Ethiopia. And I know we've talked to people who have said, oh, I haven't even gone there. Or like, I thought this place was unsafe or that these people would treat people not well. Mm, And then like they see how we've, the experiences that we've had. Mm. um, And it's been really positive because at the end of the day, like everybody has like more in common and everybody look most people are kind otherwise we would not have survived mm-hmm. <laughs> all of our adventures and yeah. all around mm-hmm. the country oh. yeah yeah i guess i guess that's enough to say <laughs> right i don't want to pressure you too much what do i think of the president <laughs> <laughs> the president no 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 i'm just I'm no just <laughs> <laughs> that, that was an epic fail because hmm? like it have was a prime minister it's the prime minister yeah 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 okay <laughs> <laughs> we just let that slide <laughs> yeah i think you had a question yeah, you yeah, yeah after being to 64 countries which one astonished you the most like the one that surprised you mm. Mm. i mean ethiopia was a place i wanted to return to because i felt like it was so underrated mm. like, like you're just saying that because we're ethiopian 
Uh, you would think you, you, that you, could, you can I be know, honest, right? Like I'm pandering right now, but right. like, look, I'm back here. Okay. <laughs> and now I've been here for like two plus over two months. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, and this, this is definitely one of the longer periods mm. of time I've spent in any country. Okay. Um, you know, definitely like India, I spent longer. Yeah. I spent six months there last year. <laughs> wow. That's an astonishing country for similar reasons too, actually. Like, because I think I really appreciate like how diverse each of these countries are. Like India is, they have like 28 states and there's different languages and like every mm. and everyone and there's different religions and there's like a huge amount of like history. Um, and so I really like appreciate the amount of like diversity in all of those aspects and mm-hmm. like and i'm a sucker for mountains mm, <laughs> yeah. okay so, that makes sense all right mm. yeah but i mean there's, there's of course a lot of astonishing places ethiopia will come to my mind now because i'm in ethiopia uh-huh. but it's the place that honestly i've spent the longest in after india I can't think of a place I've spent longer in. So obviously, obviously the United wow. States. Right. I mean, but I, yeah. I generally like a month, like I'll spend in places and then I, I leave. Okay. Mm. Um, so you like the mountains here. Mm. <laughs> You've established that. What else do you like about the country? Um, I mean, okay. So there's like the nature. The nature is like right. incredible. Mm. Um, I really love like the food. It does like remind me of Indian food, but mm-hmm. I love the spicy, uh, all of that stuff. Um, and like, <laughs> there's so there's so much here like because we went into like the mountains in Ras Dasha and then like right, the Danakil yeah, yeah, depression yeah. is like incredible and then um like the cities have so much history mm. I mean you're from like Aksum to mm. like Lalibela yeah. and and I didn't Never know any of that place. stuff was here what so I didn't like I didn't know growing up I didn't know anything about okay. the I wouldn't have expected, okay, like, you know, one of the oldest mosques in mm. the world yeah. and in Africa to be here in Ethiopia. Yeah. Right. Um, I wouldn't have expected there to be, like, some of the oldest, like, church ruins here. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, they do call it, like, the land of origins, yeah. like, yeah. for a reason. And so there's just an incredible amount of history here. And, no, we don't really learn about it. Like, I guess, like, in, yeah. <laughs> in American school mm. and world mm. history, this mm. isn't what have we're... You, have you recorded any podcasts in the rest of the 64 countries? Mm. Or is this your first one? No, you're thinking about I've it. recorded in India. Uh-huh. Oh, nice. This would be... That yeah. Is that your... That's just back yeah. home. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, she's been there for six months. And it's oh, only yeah. Fair. yeah, yeah. So this would be... The first yeah. one. Oh, actually, oh no, Sudan, Sudan. Sudan. I, because of the war. Yeah, the oh, war I happening see, there. Oh, Sudan also I have a <laughs> a connection with. <laughs> yeah. Um, you stayed there for how long? I was there for two months. Two months. Mm. Yeah, before the war, a couple, a few weeks, and then right. once the war. So started. same thing here, though. Like you, you've been here for two months. Yeah, it's more more than that actually. More than that. Yeah. Do you intend to stay here longer? Um. W- I'm nearing the end of my visa Ooh. now. I think we're going to go do the Horn of Africa. And I think I do want to come back and see like the south of the country. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, it's yeah, really like green I, in the south, like yeah. Hmm? Yeah. really, really green in the south of the country. Yeah, yeah. A yeah. lot of, lot of jungles. Yeah. And then uh-huh. maybe when I come back, it'll be like September oh, when yeah. it's like right after the rainy uh, season. Mascaram, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 You know about Mascaram? No. <laughs> okay. So we have our I've own way of like uh, counting the calendar. How do you count? Oh. Right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah, got like yeah. 13 months. Uh-huh. It goes, I'm not going to go through the whole <laughs> yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so like you'd actually remember it. But like I mean, the first one is Maskaram. The first month of the year is Maskaram. And that's like spring. Right? Uh, so currently it's the rainy season, right? Yeah. Right after the rainy season comes spring. Oh. Uh, Maskaram. So this would be September. Yeah. September. Exactly. Okay. Right. Yeah. But that would be a really good time to visit. Oh, that was so interesting for me too. Like here yeah. they tell time differently. Yeah. <laughs> I'm seven years younger here. Yeah, you year. are. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Right. <laughs> I feel like you, you can be proud of what you accomplish. Mm. So yeah. I don't think it would really matter like, whether you're seven years younger or not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's mm. true. That's true. But it's nice but to say. <laughs> let me ask you some personal questions if you don't mind. Yeah, go for it. Okay. So uh, I would think culturally Ethiopia and India are similar and uh, here in Ethiopia our families get involved in our personal lives and uh, <laughs> it's going to be 
difficult sometimes when you make some decisions for yourself. So mm. I would think your family might react in some sort of way. You deciding to become a, a, a hitchhiker. How did they take it? So nowadays, like my parents are much more, you know, like hands off mm -hmm. and. My parents' friends actually following my Instagram and thinking it was cool. Like one of my dad's friends was like, wow, your, your daughter's so adventurous. Like, wow. this is cool. And that seems to have changed his perspective <laughs> on wow. it. Um, but yeah, I mean, this, this is definitely a, a struggle that I think a lot of people have where their families like influence their decisions. Like for mine, I guess maybe because like you grew up in, in America and there's more of like an independent culture there and then I guess like over like years as you like are making your own decisions like your parents get used to it mm -hmm. um but I think um they're 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 probably hoping that like I settle down at some point but <laughs> they respect the fact that it's like my my life and um They, I think they, at the end of the day, do think that what I'm doing is interesting too. Right. So it's just kind of like, okay, be safe. Yeah. <laughs> so it did take years to get there, right. yeah. but now we're here. And so like, that's nice. Do you see yourself settling down in the US? I don't know where I would settle down. Um, I mean, a part, of course, a part of me could always settle down in the US because I've been there and like mm -hmm. my friends are there mm -hmm. and whatnot. But there's a lot of cities that are interesting around the world. So I think it just depends on like where I find like interesting work or, uh -huh. you know, mm -hmm. just since I still seem to want to keep moving around, right. <laughs> there's, I guess if there's something that like keeps me right. in a place, then yeah. I would, I would settle there. But no, I'm not like tied down to settling in the, in the U S. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. okay. How about like the whole uh, software engineering thing? Mm -hmm. like, do you plan to, to get back to it? Or, like, do you intend to make a living out of, like, your lifestyle? Uh, these are good questions that I don't 100% know the answer to mm -hmm. yet. Um, I did software engineering for many years, and I did really like it. I feel like now I want to do this and see where it goes. Um, and so, yeah, I'm kind of just, like, playing it playing it by ear, see like what kinds of opportunities open up and see mm. how I like it, how I am doing at it as well. Right. And then go from there. I think it's something that's really hard to like plan. Right. right. Mm. As software engineers ourselves, I mean, sometimes you just get curious and want to learn new uh, technologies that are coming up. Mm -hmm. But do you actually keep on engaged in the software world or are you just, I mean, you should stay away from yeah. that. and just, just come back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No, so for the last um, few months, definitely, I have not been that engaged in the software engineering world. My computer is still gone. Mm. So. Oh, it's still in Sudan? <laughs> still in it's Sudan. still in Sudan. Damn. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so I was taking that either as a, maybe that's a sign. <laughs> <laughs> Could be. Yeah. Um, so we'll see. Um, software engineering is always something that is there that I'm interested in that I could go back to. But it would be interesting also to see if I like, I don't know, figure out how to like marry the two <laughs> interests. Right. I don't know. Right. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's possible. So what, what were you working on? Like uh, what programming language were you working on? Um, my last job was all in JavaScript. Okay. Um, previously, I've worked in like Java, Python. Right. Um, but yeah, we did. Yeah. I mean, um, maybe it's not a really a trend right now, but... Uh, It's a thing, like a nomad software developer is a... It is, a yeah, yeah. It's thing. a good it's skill to learn for anybody who's true. looking for a mm. skill that kind of gives you freedom and also like better pay. And yeah. it's also like challenging, like intellectually. Right. Mm. Uh, it's you, good. So you're not actively developing things now? Right now, no. So how do you make money then? I live off of my passive income. Uh, yeah. She, yeah. She made smart investments. She made smart investments. Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And right now the markets are down, but I, I'm like you know. accumulating. <laughs> yeah, that's when you buy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I right. dollar cost average into the markets. Right. Now. Mm, exactly. So what's your favorite framework like from JavaScript? What's your favorite JavaScript framework? Uh, I mean, I like React. Maybe Vue is better. But yeah, we were working in a completely node backend. We rewrote the entire, um, mm. it was a, it was a website, a legal tech okay. website. Um, 
So you wrote it in Node and React. And it's actually really nice to have the entire stack be in JavaScript, JavaScript. because then when we're hiring developers, mm. then we can have people that are working full stack. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we're only like, yeah, people who have like one skill. Um, so that was, yeah. Yeah. Are you familiar with uh, Svelte? Uh, I haven't used it much, but yeah. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. uh, the only reason I asked you is, but I have some friends who are just in love with Svelte. Mm. And right now, like mm. yeah. everybody in this house is just felt. Like <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't want to call you out on it, you know. So I just prefer to say I have a couple friends who prefer felt. Ah. Uh, right, and I just wanted to well. know your two cents on how you felt about felt and felt kit, like I, relative to maybe React. I mean, yeah, I haven't used felt, so uh -huh. yeah. I don't know. Maybe try it on your next <laughs> project. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Advocating okay. right here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm. I will tag Richard here. <laughs> End <Yeah>. this episode. <laughs> anyway, do you have any more questions? I do not think I do. Maybe she has some questions for us. That would be great, yeah. Yeah. Ah. Do you um, have any more questions? Uh, no. Okay. I will ask her later on. Sure. What do you think about the political situation? <laughs> 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 we are the last people you should be asking this question yeah, okay. to. <laughs> yeah, first, you could tell her. I'm oh, for starters, like I do not really know what's going on because it's really mm. confusing. Like depending on mm. the part of the media you're listening to, like mm. it's totally different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah like I, do, I do not think I'm like I'm the right person to get get involved in the whole political uh, situation. <laughs> uh, you know, because okay, you don't have to uh, answer. <laughs> You actually have to be very careful how you like answer these questions. Yeah, yeah. It's quite sensitive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can ask them how they feel, though. I mean, <laughs> that's how I feel. No, I'm, I'm, um, not, I'm not answering any questions. Yeah. <laughs> no okay. Questions here's here's a question. <laughs> All right. Um. Have, well, first, actually, I should ask: Have you guys like traveled around Ethiopia much? Not really. No, okay. that's, depends that's on what you call much. Okay. But yeah. I mean, I've been to we've been uh, to Harar, Harar, Dredua. Yeah. You guys have been to Harar and Dredua. Yeah. 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 Hawasa is a yeah, yeah, awesome. place yeah, to go awesome. to. Is it south I don't think you've been mm. to the south. Yeah. No, no. I mean, Hawasa is a beautiful You guys have city. been? Yeah, yeah. Is it really a beautiful? Because I want to ask, like, where where would you recommend to go? Or what's your, where would you want to go? Oh, Arba Minch. Yeah, Arba Minch. Oh, Arba Minch is, uh, oh, yeah. It's really you've been good. there, right? Yeah, I've been there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's really good. Uh, Arba Minch. Yeah, yeah. You should go, for sure. There's, you can actually just book a flight there, so I don't think it would take that long to get there. Like, mm -hmm. it would be nice to to go by car mm -hmm. yeah. but it's kind of far yeah exactly <laughs> like, yeah you could hitchhike there like amazing but it's like 500 kilometers from here yeah. like i don't know how, many, yeah, how much that time. is in miles yeah <laughs> <laughs> True. yeah so if you have like limited time here like mm. just go by plane mm -hmm. and wow it's just so natural there like since you like like being in touch with nature i think you'd really enjoy it uh, mm -hmm. yeah. for sure mm -hmm. for sure and they've got like really big uh, alligators there. I'm not sure oh, if you've really? heard. Oh, yeah. I'll show you pictures actually. Like, yeah. <laughs> uh, you, you go by boat uh -huh. and the gators are just swimming right past you. Mm -hmm. And the boats are like this big. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fun. You, have to re you have to be really careful. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's quite intense, but I think you'd really have a good time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah for sure. Okay. Is there anything in. Addis or about Ethiopian culture that'd be interesting to make like a video about. Ooh. The time thing was something that was like interesting mm. to me. Okay. Because I feel like this is the only place I've been to. Is there like a country I've been to where they like actively use like a different time system? Right. Yeah. I remember I missed a bus the first oh. time I was here. <laughs> yeah. They're like, oh, the last bus is at 10. And I was yeah. like, oh, sweet. And uh. then that was like 4 p.m. actually. <laughs> yeah. So that was my first time hitchhiking in Ethiopia actually because wow. I got stuck because i thought yeah. there was a bus yeah, oh, yeah. honest Damn. mistake yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah okay how about traveling to eritrea oh yeah yeah, yeah. that's where <laughs> we want to go to Djibouti and uh -huh. then to eritrea mm. and the dream is to try to go there by cargo ship Ooh, i don't know if it's possible but well, it's a very <laughs> good try you know, like a locked country it is it is, it is. Well, they have cargo ships anyway. that go there and they yeah. do right. have a port they and do. an immigration mm -hmm. entry point there, but I okay. don't think it's open for tourists currently. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we'll see if we can somehow manage that. Oh, that would be great. Yeah. That yeah. would be great. So what's what's the plan next? Like where are you headed to next? Djibouti. You're gonna take the train. Wow. Oh the train nice. to Diradawa yep. and then yep. Djibouti. Yeah. That, yeah. That was actually the plan back in college. 
too bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, we still can do that. <laughs> we still can do that, but like the first time it opened, the the yeah. train, we intended to go there, but like we never actually got around to doing it. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, maybe if you do it, like we'll see your videos and we'll get inspired to do it as well. Yes. Oh. Yeah. yeah, I heard it's really nice. Yeah. A lot of locals don't seem to know much about it because we were trying to figure out how do we get tickets, like... Mm. Um, people were like, there's a train? Yeah, they don't <laughs> it's know. It's working? <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was actually open a couple of years ago. Yeah, yeah I can, you know, people are busy. Uh, people are busy, yeah. They're pretty tied up with other stuff. Yeah, life. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's kind of difficult to sometimes just travel with trains. Yeah. yeah, yeah. A lot of it's people travel for work, actually, not for yeah. leisure. No. Uh, and smuggling things. Yeah, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so Djibouti and then to Eritrea. Mm. Eritrea, um, yeah, and then I want to see how far along the continent I can get. Oh, so this will be a big challenge. Yeah, <laughs> ever been to Kenya? I have been to Kenya. I haven't been around that much of Kenya though, because mm. I went to Nairobi and then right. I went to Masai Mara. Like that's where I did a safari. Mm -hmm. I haven't. I don't actually know what else right. is in the continent. Mombasa, maybe. Mombasa, there's Mombasa, right. Lamu, yeah, Island. yeah. yeah. Um, uh, that would be cool. Yeah, yeah. it would be. It would be I haven't been to, to Uganda, see. Rwanda, Burundi. Whoa, oh. these countries. Those are beautiful I want countries. To go there. Actually, yeah. 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 the safari and everything. Mm -mm. And yeah. there's more mountains. I have friends who are cycling from Cairo to Cape Town. Yeah, they're wow. like, come join us in Uganda. He could join you. Oh, do you cycle? <laughs> yeah, I do. Uh, Sometimes. Yeah. yeah. He's being humble about it. <laughs> 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 Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, a lot of people are biking through uh, through Ethiopia. It's yeah. just like, I mean, what's going on? What is it? <laughs> they crazy. cycled through Ethiopia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but there's a lot of hills here. Oh, True. yeah, exactly. Yeah. I, I guess that's what's that's part of the fun for a lot of people. Yeah, yeah it's, it's beautiful. It's the challenge. Yeah. yeah. Right. Okay, so you don't have any more questions for us? I'm stuck on the question that trying to find. Uh, an interesting thing to make a video about. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. She, she asked <laughs> yeah, I'm still stuck. Right. I couldn't find it. Um, I don't know. Like, religion is really huge here. Like, mm. you could, yeah, I mean, it's you like... You could do a piece on, like, the Orthodox religion. Yeah. If that interests you. Yeah, or, I mean, or, I don't... The Muslim, mm. Muslim religion. Right. So it's, oh, exactly. It's a huge thing. It's, it's a okay. huge thing. We're actually going through a fasting season right now. Oh, yeah. 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 It started yesterday is mm -hmm. like yeah. a 16 day fast mm -hmm. um yeah like i'm not really the person you should be asking <laughs> this about I'm not, yeah but <laughs> like, give you the whole yeah i'm just trying to give you like a whole big picture thing mm. yeah yeah, right? yeah yeah i mean food could also be a thing i mean food like, could also it's be also a very thing. diverse Teresa could be. oh yeah, 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 yeah. guys a whole different culture yeah. Yeah. Teresa, oh yeah, Teresa, yeah, yeah, yeah that's what we call it yeah mm. i heard a story that like the reason people eat raw beef here came from like long ago uh -huh. when during battle yeah, right yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah they you, didn't you want don't fire to, uh, mm -hmm. and then it. so that helped them win battle yeah True. nobody actually knows it's i mean a lot of uh, stories are like, you know, like do, you, do you really think we never like ate raw meat before that i think we did i think we yeah, did it, it, it comes from <laughs> way back <laughs> I died yeah. it's, it's not like we, we haven't eaten before that it's just it, it became, became part popular of the culture after that uh, right. probably yeah. 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 yeah it became a thing you know when people socialize yeah. it gathered together it was part of like the survival skin yeah maybe at the time mm. and then it just integrated into the culture maybe yeah 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 i guess you could do a piece on tarisaga or raw meat mm. religion is you uh, uh, and Dave. like some some places just eat corn they don't even uh, yeah, like the corn based diet right like so many varieties of diets in yeah. ethiopia i mean that's also an interesting or you could just go wild and do a piece on jat i yeah, don't think yeah, anyone has actually done do. that yeah i was in the middle of doing a piece <laughs> on this right exactly because a lot of people have done something um, on the there's religion so many varieties or, of yeah, jats and oh my god even that's a whole different thing. thing. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think Ethiopia is the biggest exporter. I mean, yeah. Who else can make that? <laughs> There's only here and Yemen, I think. Uh, Yemenis probably import from Ethiopia. I think they actually grow the chat there. They might, but yeah. a large portion of it it's is imported actually imported from, from Ethiopia. Right. Yeah. yeah. Mm. It's probably the case. Mm -hmm. yeah, since you actually enjoyed it, I mean, it's a sensitive topic to some people, even Ethiopians. Specific mm. areas of, uh, specific yeah. areas of Ethiopia, yeah. they don't like it. Right, they don't. Yeah, but some part of it is like, you know, right. if you don't do it, you're a weirdo. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. <laughs> like Harar. Ex exactly. Like Harar. <laughs> exactly. Like if you don't do it there, it's kind of weird. Yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> but other parts of Ethiopia, like, they could be a little weird about it. Mm -hmm. But 
I mean, since you have this adventurous side, I think the best piece to do would be on chat. Mm. Okay. Right. Glad I have the support. <laughs> yeah. We're not endorsing chat though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> not at all. <laughs> no. Also, you could make about coffee too. Yeah. Oh, yeah, coffee. coffee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. How do you feel about Ethiopian coffee? I love coffee. Oh. The so I love kind. the coffee. Here. Yeah, I love right. the coffee here. Yeah. yeah, we're gonna make you coffee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yes. I, was, I, I wish we did it with yeah. the yeah. whole like uh, ceremony, you know, like with the uh, jabana. We, uh, no. like, yeah, yeah, yeah. we, <laughs> we don't have those. Oh, yeah, we don't have those. <laughs> I wish we did that, but I yeah. guess we like maybe some other time. Yeah. yeah. Sure. So you could try try this coffee, Spuncho coffee. coffee. Oh. That's that's the coffee we're having. Oh yeah yeah yeah. Right. I'm a fan of most coffees. In India, too, they have a big, like, coffee tri culture. I like mm. the coffee here better. Mm-hmm. Really? Okay. <laughs> and okay. they put a lot of milk and sugar into it. I like oh, yeah. that here it's just, like, it's like an espresso. Right. right. Yeah. 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 Right. And I like that it's, like, you can get it everywhere on the street. Yeah. And I like the, like, um, there's, like, a culture around it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Awesome. Mm-hmm. All right. So we gave you ad- ideas. All right. Like, no more questions for us. Mm. Oh, sorry. Right. Like, it was really nice to have you. Yeah, yeah. we're honored. Yeah. yeah, it was nice being here. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for joining us too. Oh, Wanna anyway, give her um, the person who recommended you is stuck in Gondor. Yeah. yeah oh yeah. my <laughs> God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He yeah, went there for a job and uh, he couldn't it's make crazy. it back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You got lucky. Yeah. <laughs> you got lucky. I did. Yeah. Yes. Did. Getting out of. The, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 People yeah. are just stuck there. You know. Yeah. 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 It's very sad. <laughs> My luck was here after Sudan. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, uh, so thank you for coming. Wait, before that. Okay. okay. Uh, we have this uh, culture on the podcast. Whenever like, we, whenever we remember, like mm. we tell the guests to just give a word to the audience. And whoever got to the, the last part of the podcast, they'll just write that in the comments. And that's our way of knowing who got to till the end. Till Wait. the end of the episode. Wait, say that again. All right, so <laughs> you just say any word you want, like any word that comes to your mind. If you don't want that, like we can just tell you any word. And you tell them to say that word. And whoever got to this part of the podcast would say it, well, would write it down in the comments. That way, it's like our way of knowing who got to till the very end of the podcast. Ah, right? oh, okay, okay. All right, did you get me? I like this, yeah. Okay, so any word you can you want to say, you can just say it right into the camera. Jungle. 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 Yeah. All right. <laughs> okay. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. This is it, I guess. Yeah. So thank you for joining us. This has uh, been a very fun and exciting podcast to host. And uh, thank you again for coming. Until next time, peace out. All right. Bye. <laughs>